Welcome back to the second half of uh, Bing Bang Theory. I'll be the vlog. We're now <laughs> going to end up doing a single vlog, a single uh, peripatetics vlog because uh, this is our second half. The first half went 17 minutes, and so we'll continue our discussion from here on out. Uh, part of peripatetics, as I said, is the ponderance. So we ponder different things, think about different things. Uh, this is typically what goes on my mind as I'm walking and now you're participating in this participating in the ideas that evolve or thought about as I'm walking from one point to the next uh, this is about in total about an hour and a half to two hours worth of well even sometimes three hours depending on how things go uh, it's about three hours in length in terms of the walk yeah, you know, between two and three hours. Uh, see, as I said before, it's, I forgot the damn date stamp. Yeah, so it's 19 hours and probably 25 minutes into the day of Friday, September 9th, 2016. And while we're figuring out the time here, because I forgot the time and date stamp, and this gives me an idea. So we came in, we left my place at 16:30. It's almost 17.30 now, that's an hour. So we've been in, out for an hour already. And it'll probably take us another half hour to an hour to get back. So uh, that will give you an idea of how long the, this peripatetics actually is, the walking and everything. Uh, initially, when I first started doing this, it was not possible. It was very rough. I got back just in time before my energy ran out. Sometimes, and this is where you use your uh, uh, powers of meditation, if you will, uh, and that's sort of the prayer meditation I use, uh, to push yourself beyond the pain, to focus beyond the immediate pain, the physical pain, so that you can get home. So that's happened sometimes out walking, I went out a little bit too far, uh, my knees started to buckle, uh, everything was sore. Uh, the only way to get past the pain was to use the meditation, the meditation to use the uh, whatever you use to focus. I said I use uh, that simple prayer. Uh, basically, it's like this: and it's Lord Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy on me, <laughs> right? or Lord have mercy. Uh, simple like that. That's the thing you say uh, for my focus, anyways. Not much more is needed <laughs> uh, for my form of Christianity. There are a number of forms of Christianity, uh, but my form uh, connects directly to Christ. Others have, I would say, significantly, significant deviations from them. Uh, and this includes the Catholics, who in many ways like the, are a lot like the Muslims. We complain about the Muslim Jihad today. If you look in history, the Jihad has always been there. The Muslims, historically, are behaving exactly the way they did uh, way back when, from the 700, from 700 AD. And, and the thing is, when well, you can talk about the Muslims, say, oh, how violent they are. One need only look into recent history to see the conflict in Ireland between the Protestants and the Catholics. And then go from there, we're crossing again go from there to see that the history of Catholicism is just as violent as the history of Islam. So there's no difference between Catholicism and Islam. 
both are religions that convert by the sword. You, they force you to convert. They torture you in order to convert. I mean, this was this was eloquently and destructively brought out. I don't say not eloquently, but more blatantly brought out. If you go and study the Spanish Inquisition, a study of the Spanish Inquisition will give you an understanding of just how violent the papacy and the Catholic Church was. And this is kind of, this is it, this is historic. These are historic of it. And now, you have a lot of historians in the universities trying to whitewash European history and get rid of all the nasty little bits and try to say, oh, European history has always been uniform. Uh, it's been like one big family, everyone's on the same page, and blah, 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 blah. Well, all you have to do is go back to World War II, which many people now don't remember. Uh, there are a lot of people who have no clue as to what happened it, under Nazi Germany. They don't even remember 1945. And the thing is, the argument is because within the socialist, the, the socialist education system, well, that's before my time. See, what happens is that with socialism and the need to make things socially relevant, history has absolutely no meaning. So it's not taught. And no emphasis is put on history either. And so the result is, you end up with a generation of people who have no clue as to what actually happened in history. And this is, this is a significant thing because if they don't understand where fascism comes from and where it came from, in other words, how does fascism evolve? How did Hitler evolve? How did Stalin evolve? How do you prevent this from history happening? As they say, history repeats itself. Those who fail to learn from history are doomed to repeat it. And the thing is, this can actually be seen in today's uh, elections. Look what's happening in Europe. Look what's happening in the United States. Look at Wynne. Look at uh, Justin Trudeau. This is history repeating itself. This is the door of fascism opening. And the people who are opening the door, the socialists, the ones on the left, are saying more, more, more. But don't realize that as they open the door and their system collapses, the right will come in and that's where you will have your totalitarian dictatorship like Stalin, like Hitler, and they'll wipe every day. Anyone who does not agree with them, out. But the thing is, you can also look into the Soviet history to see that while the socialists on the left did not overtly torture people and kill people. When you look at the gulags in the Soviet Union, you begin to and, and look at the, uh, at the at the purges, like we see now the purges in Turkey, or the Turkish military, as Erdogan takes over. Right? These purges aren't new; they're history. This is what we saw in the Soviet Union. Right? And that's to say, doesn't matter left or right, socialism. Is about dictatorship and nothing more and that's where it leads to but if you don't know your history if you don't understand history then how do you know this is what's happening and this is why a lot of people don't understand what's happening they trust the news they trust the media and they this media tells everybody what's true and what's not true without realizing a lot of what the media is saying is dictated by governments so if you're anti-establishment, why are you watching the mainstream media? Right? If you call yourself anti-establishment, you're the, well, you're the person who's different than everybody else. Why are you watching mainstream media? And check your own media, right? Don't just question mainstream media. Question your own. Ask yourself, am I watching what is actually going on? Or am I being fed information through a anti, uh, you know, mainstream information from the government through an anti-establishment filter. 
In other words, are these anti-establishment people who are talking about these things, are they actually anti-establishment or are they establishment? Simple way to tell. On YouTube, look down below. If they state they're anti-establishment, they should see Creative Commons. In other words, they would allow free reuse of their content. If you see standard YouTube license, then it's copywritten. And they are not anti-establishment, they're establishment. And they're lying to you. So this is true for Alex Jones. This is true for Glenn Beck. This is true for Rush Limbaugh. This is true for... Uh, Anyone on the left who's doing this, you know, is it, uh, 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 there's a number of, the, oh yeah, the Young Turks, the Young Turks, they're copywritten, they're establishment, even though they claim to be anti-establishment. Uh, and once you understand this, you begin, you can begin to see and understand where the establishment is and where the establishment isn't. And this will give you a better idea, a better understanding of how to approach various different issues. So the thing is, my question about of voting is, you know, well, who do you vote for? I vote for the person who is least destructive. You certainly want, it's not, it's not about liking. Who's going to be the least damaging of the two? And so far for me, that's Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton has lied every single step of the way. And the thing is, the people on the left, the people who support her, the Hillbots, are saying nothing. They don't even care. They don't even know what's going on. They simply follow the lines, spew, spew the mantras, and act like parrots. Anyways, and then they call it then they call themselves uh, free thinkers. <laughs> Anyways, that's it for now. I will see you in the next segment. Well, the next episode of Big Bang Theory, because this is a single episode. Uh, probably sometime later on tonight. Alrighty, welcome back everyone to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory's uh, BTS vlog. It is uh, one hour into the day of Saturday. Oh, Sunday. September 11th, 2016. I'm vlogging at the end of my observing session tonight. Because there was too much rain to vlog, because I'm out here by the security light, there was too much rain to vlog uh, out earlier. So now this is the things have cleared cleared up. Uh, I've got I was able to get uh, basically three good clips of the storm, uh, and some of them you can it, it's more about hearing, it's more about what you hear more than what it is about what you see. Uh, and then give me an example here. The one clip, uh, the first clip that I got. Uh, was, uh, well, I could see it visually, and I don't know how it's going to come out on the film. Uh, there were, uh, was the cloud that, that, that produced an enormous number of uh, sequential lightning strikes. Enough that it sounded like fireworks going off on a consistent basis. But there wasn't fireworks. You'd see the flash of light, you'd see the, that it, come, it was coming down, and you would see... Uh, you'd hear off, the, off in the distance, so you'd hear the pop, pop, pop as the lightning struck. And so this was an amazing event for myself. I was able to capture that, uh, not necessarily on film in terms of the actual visual, but on terms of, because it was north of us, north of where we were sitting, north of the observation point. Uh, but I was able to capture the sound. The question is now is whether or not the sound will actually come out and how it will come out, because it was also raining at the time. Uh, then I've also got uh, several periods of rain, of uh, wind, uh, in addition to some cloud movement. So I've been trying out the new tripod system out here, and it's a portable tripod system, so it's easy to move around, easy to carry with me. Uh, in other words, it makes the office uh, more functional than, uh, for the remote office, more functional than it was in the last few periods where I was just simply using a monopod. And right now, I'm actually the uh, camera still mounted to the mount of the tripod. But it's, it, it folds up enough that I can use it as a monopod and hold it just the way I would be holding it if it was the, uh, the monopod to do a uh, vlog like this. So uh, I think it's, uh, from my perspective, it, it reduces the shakes, it reduces uh, uh, the strain in my arm or my hand. So 
Uh, it's a lot, uh, a lot more comfortable to vlog like this, so I can actually do a better job at the vlog than uh, simply uh, holding it in my hand. So I think this is going to be uh, something that's good because it's, it's compact enough. When it folds up, it's compact enough that I can fit into my electronics bag and take it with me wherever I go. So I think uh, you'll see I'll be using this tomorrow morning uh, when I vlog in church. So because uh, that's going to happen again. <laughs> Anyways, I will see you in the next segment. Oh, almost forgot. There is going to be a slight gap in our vlogs because I lost I lost the uh, SD card, the uh, micro SD card. What ended up happening? I was taking I was going to take the uh, clip out of the out of the uh, the card out of the uh, camera. The we, the card reader, the uh, slot that goes in, is spring-loaded. I wasn't careful when I was doing it, and it, it kind of popped. And it shot out of the, uh, card, he the, out of the uh, card reader slot. And went. I have no idea where it went. And I looked for it, I tried to look for it, and I can't find it. So, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone, and so are all the uh, clips that are on that, on the uh, on the card. So that's what, what that's the way things go. What are you gonna do about it? I ordered a new card, a new card for this uh, camera. It was actually for this camera. Uh, I just right now I'm, I'm sort of I scavenged the uh, uh, the card from the indoor camera, the same one as this micro SD, uh, and I ordered two more. So. Just, I, I decided instead of ordering one more, I would order two more just in case I lose another another uh, SD chip again. In case that happens again, I'll always have that backup. And I'm actually planning on next month in, Octo in October, actually, to order another camera like this just in case I need to ha have a backup for this camera. So we'll end up seeing what's happening. Well, this is kind of the way things go. So. <laughs> I'll see you in the morning, or actually in a few hours from now, because it is morning, it's 1 a.m. I'll see you uh, just about uh, 7, 8 hours maybe. I'll talk to you again and uh, I'll vlog inside church. So, see you then. Well, hello everybody, welcome back to the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory's BTS vlog. It is 23 hours and 41 minutes into the day of Monday. September 12th, 2016, that's right. Almost forgot the time. <laughs> and almost forgot the date. But, uh, remembered at the last minute. I'm using the new, uh, uh, uh tripod, monopod, uh, combination with the camera here. It fits in my bag, so, new bag fits. Uh, a little larger tripod. Before I had a really tiny one, squeeze the legs together, so you have three legs, this is one. That becomes the monopod if it's light enough to hold, and you've got a nice uh, vlogging system. This one allows me to use a, a, a larger tripod so I, with, with fold out legs so I can actually do it if I wanted to. I could actually do it uh, full height uh, so I don't have to hold it. But, you know, uh, this gives me good practice holding it anyway. So, I uh, almost had a huge mess up today. Uh, what was it? Uh, for about a week's worth of, uh, of vlogging, I think it is, is that uh, we lost the chip. Yeah, I was unloading it from the camera. Uh, the slot is spring-loaded, and it just popped out, and I have no idea where it went. <laughs> um, so this is a new one. This is a new chip in here. Uh, I'm waiting tomorrow. The uh, uh, spare chips will be uh, arriving. So that way I'll have backups in case I do lose more chips again. Uh, you always need to do, you know, that's the sort of thing. If you're, if you're doing something on a regular basis, instead of having one, you need two in order to have a backup. So that's what's happened. I ordered another two chips. So I have this one. I have, uh, I'll have one, in, basically I'll have one in this camera, one in another camera. That's exactly the same as if this is the backup camera for the, uh, the new one that I just bought. Um, yeah, the thing is, this is why it's an outdoor camera now. I can take this outdoors because I have another one. If this, something happens to this, then I've got a second backup camera that I can use and replace this one. So that's uh, how that works. And I have a second chip now for the uh, for the, the backup one. 
uh, and another one that's coming. So uh, that's the way things are going to work out. And then uh, right now, I'm waiting for a new system to arrive. Uh, it, the, the, the edge is somewhat here. Uh, before these last few days, uh, we've had a system coming down from Alaska and the Arctic. And so it's been rather cold. It went down to about 50 degrees last night. Uh, the high today was just about uh, between 72 and 75 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. Uh, people wonder why you should be using Celsius. That's the scientific. Well, the thing is, is people don't know sci uh, 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 Celsius. Celsius is good for chemistry when using uh, high temperatures. But when you're using, you talk about the human time, the human uh, scale of temperature. Then Fahrenheit for the human scale is a, is a much better scale than it is because you have more graduations, more uh, ticks uh, than you do in Celsius. Celsius, you can go uh, basically at, at 30 degrees Celsius, uh, you're already past the boiling point, and so you basically only have 30, 30, 30 ticks uh, to work with uh, when you're talking about uh, you know human temperature, but uh, if we all know that uh, sometimes a 20 degree difference will, will mean something different. You know, a 20 degree Fahrenheit difference will be uh, enough to cause comfort or discomfort. And the Celsius scale isn't a, a, isn't as it's not as sensitive as that. The Fahrenheit scale does allow for these minute t t changes, where the Celsius scale doesn't. And so basically, if you're using large, if you're using large scale temperatures, if you're doing a lot of chemistry, yeah, Celsius is good. But if you're using it from the human perspective, talking about the human perspective, then Fahrenheit is actually the better scale to use. And that's why I use Fahrenheit because it's a human scale, and we're talking to human beings. We're not, uh, you know, working on chemical equations in terms of what I'm discussing. And so, uh, the Fahrenheit is the better scale. Oh, so where are we here? Uh, yeah, the, the uh, Arctic system is gone. Is well, it's on its way out. The new system uh, that's going to replace the, our usual, um, we we'll call it diagonal. It's uh, it's the heat flow embedded in water vapor that comes from basically the Gulf of Mexico area, basically between Texas, Texas, Texas. Mexico and uh, off the coast of Mexico, that is basically the Baja California area. There, that uh, th those ocean, the, the, that area there. Uh, this is where a lot of our weather has been coming from in terms of uh, for where I am, and I use this sort of track the uh, the the flow of uh, water vapor from the tropics up to the poles because uh, it doesn't stop here where I am at Toronto. One, one, just one of the points along the way. Uh, its main destination is up near uh, Greenland, uh, up in the Arctic. So you can see the sort of uh, line of moisture that goes from the equator all the way up. But it, uh, these last few uh, uh, weeks, it hasn't maintained itself steadily. It's been there, then broke for about a week, then broken up. Been there for a couple of days, broken up. Uh, and we got some very cold temperatures in when it was broken up. Now it's reforming again. So, and this is the other thing: you you want to sort of see these. And this is why you have to do this not only throughout the entire season. You know, what, like well, well, oh, I'm doing it for a couple months. Oh, that's good enough. No, you have to do it through the season to see how this this these features change throughout the season. So, what's it like in fall? What's it like in in uh, winter? What's it like in uh, uh, spring? What's it like in the summer? You know, how do these things uh, vary? And then you also want then you want to do a second year because you want to see the comparisons between the years. And of course, you know there's there there are scales there 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 are uh, actually not scales cycles. Uh, when you're talking about temperature and global temperature, uh, there are cycles on the sun. How does the uh, solar flare cycles the uh, uh, the sunspot cycles? How does that affect the upper atmosphere? How does that affect? The, our climate here on Earth, and these are the sort of the things you have to go into, and, and it, because these things are long term, like the, the solar cycle is eleven years, right? For for one half of the cycle, right, to go from high to low, right, it's eleven years to go back up to the high again to complete the cycle up to the high point of uh, solar activity. 
you've got another year, another, another 11 years to go. So you basically have 22 years for one solar cycle. So you have to take this into account and as you're working with the, doing atmospheric physics, you have to, because <laughs> if you didn't know, uh, the sun is our primary heat engine. It's, it's what's putting in the, the heat into the Earth's atmosphere. So if you're going to track the heat, then you have to track the sun. So the atmospheric physics lends itself, and a person who is a good atmospheric scientist should be looking into and becoming an astrophysicist, particularly looking at the sun, a solar astrophysicist. If you don't, don't take that extra step, then you're going to be missing a huge chunk of the equation. And so this is what has to happen, and it has to happen, again, on a, on a, on a, uh, because you're dealing with the sun, we're dealing with it in, in, in an orbital sense. Uh, our position changes throughout the year in terms of its orbit in relationship to the sun. Well, how does that affect the, what we see here on Earth? That's another, you know, it has to be answered. It has to be sort of, and, and it, it's not answered totally. It's answered to only a specific degree. There's, it, it, it's asymptotic. You can never up, absolutely reach it. And because the, and, and this has been proven uh, by um, orbital scientists who people who, who sort of their job is to uh, track and understand the orbital mechanics. Uh, these are the people who sort of send uh, satellites and rockets to different planets and stuff like that. They have to know where the planet's going to be. They have to plan for these things. And these are basically equations, so they have to study these motions. And from the studies of these motions, they found what the ancient what the ancient astronomers already knew. That the, plan the, the planetary orbits are not perfectly circular. That there are eccentricities to them. That they're fundamentally, if you want to call it this, they're, they're, they're a, 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 a combination, a sort of a hybrid between a sphere, or, or should I say a, a, a circle and an ellipse. So they're not perfectly circular. They're, 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 but they're not, again, they're not fully elliptical either. They're sort of a combination of the two. And they're held in place not by a solid track that stays there, but they're held in place by the, the uh, gravitational pull between the sun and the earth. And that varies, because if the, if the earth ro speeds up in its rotation, and it has done that uh, with a various number of earthquakes, the last earthquake that ha the, uh, they had in, in Jakarta, the one that... Uh, killed a lot of people with the tsunami there. Uh, that actually, they found that that earthquake had actually sped up the rotation of the Earth. And as that happens, our speed in space picks up. And this could actually cause an elongation of the orbit because now the Earth is moving faster. The, the Earth's, the, the Sun's pull, gravitational pull, is going to have to work pull it back in. So as it's going out, at a higher rate of speed, it's going to go further out into the orbit before the, the before gravity pulls it back in again uh, and, and, and swings it around for the next section of the orbit. And so this is sort of the things that we sort of have to take, understand is that this is why you can never get a full answer because the orbit's always changing. Uh, and, if, and this is over a year to year period, uh, a decadal period, uh, a century period, um, the, the, over thousands of years, you know, th there are changes. So you'll never get an exact uh, understanding of the orbit. And this is why they actually do have ways to correct uh, orbital issues with uh, aircraft in terms of uh, the uh, spacecraft, in terms of how they approach a particular planet and where they're going to go to. But, uh, anyways, I'm going to leave this here for now because uh, we're over our time. And it's, there seems to be an issue with uh, um, offloading clips that are longer than 10 minutes. So <laughs> Every time you do something new, there's always some different quirk or uh, uh, thing that needs to be worked around. So, Anyways, I'm going to leave it here for now, and I will talk to you in the next segment of uh, Big Bang Theory's BTS Log. All right, take it easy.
Welcome to the library. And I am the library. I am the professor. And professor of what? Professor of physics. Oh, say, can you see? Speech rules here at Democratic Earth.